Welcome to another edition of the Bandwagon Podcast. And today I've had to pull the family card from this guy. Is uh, he's one of he doesn't give very much. Uh, I'll say a lot of interviews in that way. Um, and he's always um, w- whenever he talks, he's one of those guys where you kind of listen in terms of what they said because it's the it's a it's a future sound, it's a future interest, and uh, you know um, I would say an anchor in the whole Punjabi music industry. Um, so without further ado, Mani Sandu, how are you? What's up? I'm good, bro. I'm good. What are you saying? I'm all right. I'm all right. You're doing missions today, yeah? Running uh, around. Yeah, I've had to do so. We've uh, we've tried to pull this. Uh, we tried to arrange this uh, as well. And uh, during yeah, no. wedding my season, fault, man. no, no, fault, no, man. it's cool. Wed- wedding season's kicked off, so any of these bags in the mile is is just like <laughs> running from one place to another, and um, makes you not miss it at all, man. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I tell crazy, you, the tr- man. you speak to a lot of these DJs, and they'll tell you the straight thing. It's like. They're regretting it, man. They're just all, serious. Yeah, they're hating it, man. They're hating it. Damn, damn. I see so many people at weddings and stuff as well. And I think, like, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm ready, man. I'm not ready to get back out there just right now, you know? Imagine, imagine going to a place where you hate the people there anyway, and then they give you COVID. <laughs> in it, in it. That's like a double whammy, man. That would be a killer. I hate going to weddings anyway, man. Unless it's like someone I know is long, man. I, I've always hated going to weddings. I find it so long. It's funny because one of our one of our conversations we had was at a, at a family that a wedding. wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was going to you going, I go, Manny, you got the whole of the North Cane, yeah. Why don't you set up a DJ? And Jazz is like going, yeah, you know, so Rick, you're right, man. And all this, and yeah, like, I don't yeah, want to yeah. do it. Like, my heart's not in it. Or my heart's not in it. Then, I can't, man. I can't. I haven't got the patience, man. You got to have a lot of patience. You got to deal with like pissed like like people and stuff and just i don't know it's long it's long good money and stuff from what i hear but um and uh, i don't want to do something that i don't enjoy in it yeah no i mean to be fair the amount i don't think dj suppliers and all that kind of get enough kind of credit for that kind of stuff they charge that because the amount of hours the time mm. the sacrificing and all this you know it, it, it is just something that you see in the background and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it is a it is a lot of hard work, but a lot of sacrifice, and especially if you got a young family in that as well. And you know, a lot of these guys have, and the way mm-hmm. they have to try and balance that out, it, it, you know, it's not envious. And I think the money involved kind of compensates that as, as best as it can, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, these guys they were hit hard in it with like COVID and stuff in it, like badly, man. So yeah, I feel for them, man. And <laughs> they got a hard job, I'm not gonna lie. They got you gotta be on top of music. You gotta know everything that's out, like different genres and stuff. Mm. And like these days is you can't just play Punjabi music, innit? You gotta have like you gotta know about different like types of music and stuff, innit? So it's a hard job, man. You gotta have the garage set, you gotta have the English set, you gotta have a mm. DC set, then you're gonna have you know any anything that's going on and it's it's funny because people they'll say like oh recommend a DJ or recommend and like none of them are shit man all of them yeah are, yeah, you know, yeah because they true. they've professionalized it and everyone knows what they're playing nowadays yeah and I think the the one two percent those are the ones who are kind of like elevated higher because they know what, not you know what they know what they're doing in in that kind mm-hmm. of thing so. yeah yeah they can read audiences and stuff and I think mean, that's like a good DJ someone that can you know like just switch up their whole style based on what kind of audience they've got in it. So you'll be impressed with this link, yeah? So you're talking about, like, switching up styles and knowing your audience. You're mm. definitely one person in your music career from, like, your debut album in 2012 coming up to 10 years next year, like, knowing how you... knowing what kind of sound that you, that you were bringing in. How did you know that this was the particular way that you were going to go? Because surely at that time... You know the pressures were for dance floor wedding bangers, and then all of a sudden you've gone into your kind of music and bought this kind of. Yeah. You know you're concentrated more on the 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 West Coast sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, man. I can't even say that it was like something that we thought we were going to do in it, like as in if we were going to go a different way to what was happening in the scene. It just it's always been like music that we like, like, and when I say we, it's normally like me jazz who's probably going to come up a few times he's my brother for people that i don't know and um gopi as well like sangra vibes like us three we're like always just just like just talking about music and like what kind of music we like to make what kind of music we like to listen to and stuff and um 
yeah like back in like 2012 yeah you're right that was around about the time where like the UK scene it was it was just like those dance floor songs coming out left right and center like every single song was like just basically sounded the same videos looked the same um they were all catered for just like the dance floor basically and I, I, I wouldn't say I'm not into that kind of music I do like that kind of music but it's got a word that kind of song has got to have something about it do you know what I mean it can't just be like a standard you know track with like a ball or something thumbi and stuff and like simple lyrics about dancing and I'm not really into that kind of stuff do you know what I mean so yeah around about that time we were like we're just going to make music that we like so it was, that time it was like sauna with bakshi villa everyone had bakshi villa on like a proper typical dance floor beat at that time but we were like now nah, like let's get him on something like a little bit more urban and, and stuff in it and that like, just completely different and it worked man and that kind of mindset just we just carried it on and then that led to doing like the whole west coast stuff i've always been a fan of west coast music like that was like the first genre of music i remember like falling in love with you know what i mean so i would say that's what it's been man it's always been just listening to what we want rather than what the industry like is is demanding and if people like it then they like it if not then so what in it you had like uh, the three b's in it you had bucksy the bentley and the bad guy the same video, <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah oh man yeah that video oh, and like sometimes it's cringe in it watching that stuff back there, like, <laughs> I, i i watched it back just in, in, before this on it and i was like it's like even just the way that you are it's just kind of a little bit unrecognized you can just see a growth in a person and you just you just yeah yeah it, yeah yeah you know, it was cool at the time it sounded good didn't it like yeah like no, at the track sick the track is good the video was obviously the videos were around at that time at least you had the story in there you know what i mean so a lot of that was the, that's what i mean like the story was like at the time it sounded good like yeah like you're going to kick off at like, this girl for not wearing jewelry and stuff and like <laughs> now you look back and think okay yeah yeah maybe you know could have done something a little bit different but it's is like I, i wouldn't change any of that man it was it's like we had some of the best times like shooting those videos and stuff and releasing the music and like in those early days it was so different because it was like no pressure not like thinking into anything too much it was just literally making music and just dropping it you know what i mean so yeah man definitely definitely good uh, good memories and stuff and you you learn a lot from that stuff as well in it those early days Yeah cuz I'm guessing at the time there wasn't that that many people who were trying there's not that many people who have kind of like oh uh, you know lending uh, lending a hand and stuff and you had like obviously Sangra go be there for Sangra vibes who's mm. been through that had an absolutely you know their album is like phew. crazy man crazy just, album yeah yeah you know and I, I, I know I've heard you talk about it so I don't necessarily want to go over the same but like you know i remember you used to say that you were used to write essays around the album you were just so <laughs> so fixated on yeah, yeah albums yeah. And, and that movement so you know like as you, you grew up in 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 uh, london the south pole mm. area yeah. going up to newcastle change what was that like if you know you, you you're musically inclined and i don't, you know i know the family up there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have yeah. to, I'll do the shout outs later to the, to those guys but like it's just mm-hmm. a crazy scene isn't it like where you're taking the culture from that side going up north how was yeah. that in terms of like when you're starting off because you know you started your musical journey when you know just under what, younger than 15 or yeah like, I was young man like, I, I would say I don't know like 12 13 or something is when I like first first started getting into just wanting to be able to do something with me like remixing and stuff in it but yeah that it was crazy man like just going from living in south or like where you're like everyone around you is the people that you know speak the same language as like you like english and obviously punjabi yeah. all my friends on the, on our road like we had like a proper normal childhood where like we would chill with our friends play football on the road and stuff and bam out of nowhere like parents decided they want to move to newcastle which is like 300 miles away and this is newcastle in the year 2000 which is a different newcastle to what like nowadays newcastle is different because like everyone listens to like urban, a lot of people are a lot more in the urban culture now whereas back then they didn't even know what it was man and like they had never even seen like a brown person before in some some areas of newcastle um so yeah moving there was just crazy man like we ended up being 
proper antisocial really like not really having anyone to like go out and like other kids like play play with and stuff going to school with a good deal like they used to think i was a girl i'm sure loads of people have been through this kind of stuff in it um yeah it was it was it was mad it was a crazy it was just a whole different world i remember when i was so young that i was just happy that my parents were buying a shop because i was like yeah i'm gonna get free sweets so it's chilling <laughs> in it um uh, but yeah, obviously going there was just, yeah, it was just a whole different world, man. And um, I think that's probably where the music came from, man, because because we didn't really have friends because we used to get like a lot of crap in it. Like we used to get a lot of shit, man, um, from because like imagine like living in South Hill, which isn't considered the best area anyway. But then going to Newcastle, which is a like a crazy messed up area, but it's just full of racist people. It's like it's even worse, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? um so yeah and we like, like never really really go out we just used to stay at home and then that's when like i would get on the computer i would have half an hour every single day to jump on the computer have my time and just start remixing and stuff and um yeah that's that's definitely where the music journey started man and then like within the family it's not necessarily kind of like musical in that way was it just like something that you had within yourself to like say right i'm gonna do this or was this or was it an individual or what was it that triggered you off onto that journey? Yeah, it was jazz. It was 100% jazz. He used to um, remix songs on this software called Atomics MP3. It was like, um, it's like today's Serato or like Virtual DJ or something. Um, yeah. And uh, I remember he, I remember the first mix I heard him, it was a Tiger style, style track called um, Track Jatada. Mm. And he mixed it Love with... Love Dunjua. Love Dunjua. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love Dunjua. You know, yeah, that was a sick tune, man. And he mixed it with um, Biggie's Hypnotize. And I remember hearing it. And at that point, like, I, was, I wasn't even that much into Punjabi music. Like, I was into it, but it was more like when there was like a function and stuff, we would listen to it then. And it, then I was just fully into hip hop music. And I just remember thinking like, damn, like how is that even possible? Like, have you got a hip hop beat and like made it match this Punjabi song perfectly? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that's when I first had any kind of insight into like, that's even a thing, like you can do that, do you know what I mean? Um, uh, so then, yeah, and I just started doing it myself, started remixing. And obviously at the start, I was terrible. I was like, Jazz used to hear my mixes and be like, yeah, like this is shit. They were all off beat, like probably off out of key and stuff. And then one day I, I, I was playing a remix and he was like, yeah, who made that? And I told him I, I made it and he didn't believe me because um, uh, obviously I'd been practicing so long. The quality started to become a little bit better. And I think when he heard that, he was like, yeah, that's quite good, man. You should, you should stick to it. And then he just stopped it, like got into that other things, college, like going out and stuff, doing the, you know what everyone does at that age and stuff. And I just carried it on, man. So I was into remixing, DJing, done a bit of that. But then it was production anyway. When I got into production, that's when I was like, yeah, like this is this is it. This is what I want to be doing, man. Because yeah, the whole DJ thing was good, but I always felt like I want to be the person that makes the music rather than just like remixes it and stuff. So we still got we still we still got time to work on jazz in it to to to, yeah. to bring to bring him out in it. <laughs> yeah 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 100 percent. i remember years later like once this is probably around about like sauna time we, we were talking about it and i was like why don't you just try production like he's got a really good ear for music like he makes a lot of the decisions in it when it comes to the music that we like make and stuff and um even like people that other artists in the industry that pop off like he's always sending me like, their links way before they blow up saying like check this person out he's quite sick so he's got a good ear for music so i gave him like a keyboard i gave him the software installed it all on the computer i was like just try it in it he probably would have been good if he had carried on in it like back in the day if you just learned stuff but i don't know you got talent in other places in it, you know what i mean so he's probably just best off um doing what he's doing yeah i think I, you hear that quite a lot especially with siblings where they kind of like similar similar style i remember like I used to play tall and that for a little bit, and then Rav, my my old brother, he used to he used to pick it up and just play it straight away. And I was like, bloody hell, he if he wanted to, he could have done something, but he he, just, he was he went into that kind of shit, and he was just yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff and that you know it's just yeah it's right you got different talents for different things. Mm. You're obviously so you're in a kind of isolated bubble 
spot in Newcastle. Yeah. How difficult was it then to try and get your your sound, your start, your music to kind of be heard, really? I mean, like you must. There was a smaller population up north of when you're playing, you're doing your gigs and stuff like that. What mm. What was the point where it kind of transcend, uh, transcended, like you know, further south? Oh, that's the thing. It was the internet, man. Like since we were young, like even going back to like the South Old days, like we were like one of the first families that had a computer on our street, no, and that was just because my brother, like Jazz, just he just begged my parents, like. And like, like, for like, I rate my parents for getting us that computer, man, because they like helped us out big time. So we were like computer nerds, man. Like from like back in the day, like even like when I was at like high school and stuff, I used to be better than my teacher, my IT teacher. Like she straight up used to ask me about stuff like when we're doing work and when other people had questions, she would say like just just ask Amrinda. That's my actual name in it. She'd be like ask Amrinda. Um, so we use that to our advantage in it. So back then we would like make our own covers proper do press releases and stuff to like these little underground mixtapes that was making productions and stuff i had a couple one was called um my first ever one was called the demo which is like i think now what a creative name in it <laughs> um, uh, and, yeah and, and the second one i made with um, a guy called jsl who ended up making music as well and uh, and, and doing well and he's made music in like that like Punjabi pop kind of scene um uh and yeah, we just literally used the internet to get my um, music out there. Back then, it was like the Punjab 2000 message board. Um, then it moved on to, there's always been something in it. Then it moved on to like Simply Bangla was the one that was like you would post. Then Chakde.com was around. Uh, we would just use these things, man. Um, the way before there was an iTunes, uh, we sold my first track or Dwara on, on something called Seven Digital. I think it sold like, 80, 80 copies or something like that. Um, uh, That'll get so you yeah. top 10 today. Yeah, exactly. Probably number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but like we were always on it with like the technology side. So even like production videos, like nowadays, like music producers being on more online and more on social media is such a big thing. But back in like 2008, I was making like videos of myself, like making beats playing keys and stuff and putting them on YouTube before YouTube was even a thing, man. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't say that I didn't really grow my following locally and then it went down south. It wasn't, it was, everything was done off the internet. Like literally from start to finish, everything was done. Like we would like release, like we would treat it as like an album release, like do press releases, photo shoots ourselves. And then like I would edit the covers ourselves, like me or Jazz would do it and we would just put it out there. And then it just grew from it from the internet, man. I think, at that time, I was quite lucky because there was no one else doing it, to be honest, my age um, mm. and doing it the way we were doing it. It was just a different thing. And um, yeah, we literally just like, used what, the little stuff that we had and just turned it into something, man. Yeah, I could definitely see that head start having the, uh, you could see compared to some of your peers, maybe uh, of having that digital space and the way how you use it. I, can't, mm. I noticed it myself on... Um, especially how you used to interact with with your Canadian audience. I think you connected with them probably very early on in your career because um, yeah. you've always got a lot, a lot of support and a lot of love. Uh, even when I've gone out, when I've been out there, you know, mm -hmm. your, your name is one of the first ones that they kind of mention. And I know you've kind of brought it, kind of brought everybody together. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, becoming that uh, digitally aware um allowed you to have the head start or do you think it was kind of a combination of other things that were happening at the time because the the type of sound and the music genre was moving as well wasn't it it was going away from some mm. of your traditional kind of sounds and more the urban flavor coming in online presence definitely helped because like we can go like because I've, I've always had some kind of interest in whatever like social media or online thing is popping at the time so like way back in the day it was at myspace i was like i was on myspace straight away um just yeah, using it to like this full advantage like making remixes uploading them on there then like afterwards yeah obviously facebook was big and then like, there's always something do you know what i mean um uh, and twitter i would say twitter was probably the biggest for me because there was not really many Punjabi artists back then in that 2010 that were on Twitter like that, do you know what I mean? But I used to rinse it, man. I used to really like tweet whatever that was on my mind, I would tweet it. And like, even like just going against like, 
because the industry back then nowadays people can say whatever they want you know you, you probably see it yourself like people say crazy stuff on the industry these days but back then it was all about like being humble in it like like you, you can't like really swear and stuff and you want to be as like low-key and humble as possible but like i just used to go on twitter and just like if anyone said anything to me i'd swear at them i would troll people until like they were like until they just deactivate their account like literally i would go to that level in it so i think that just that online presence definitely helped people were like yeah this guy's just different you know what i mean i'm making different music i'm doing stuff online that's different even before there was like a live i would do a stream back then it was called like whenever we had a release we would go on stream and stuff and back then we were obviously younger we'd just be sessioning up and just going on yeah, I, 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 I remember i remember a, a session where you guys were <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah man like we like and like you think about it now and like nowadays people do all sorts of stuff on, on their lives isn't it? you know what i mean yeah. and like the next day we would get hate people would hate on us and be like oh these guys go on live and get pissed and stuff and it's like well if you're doing that why like why, why are you scared to do it on live i don't understand like if you're doing that behind like closed doors and stuff like i don't understand like, i never understood that you know what i mean like it's not as if like we were alcoholics or something anything like that that like, we were drinking every single day or anything like that you know what i mean we were just do what any normal guys would do on a weekend we would get together we'd have a drink and yeah but we just do it in front of people and like interact with people do you know what i mean um so yeah i guess you could say that we were <laughs> ahead of our times in terms of that anyway. do, you, do you feel that but that was the like i for me it's like a pivotal point of where the old school kind of traditional etiquette and the new the new age the, the new school so to speak um it, you know they were coming together really and trying to find a new space of trying to trying to work because mm. and because uh, i remember it, it it was one of the first times where you can get access to artists as well with it or people who you like and you could get you know an actual reply from them potentially mm. yeah, um yeah and i think that's the bit where um if you utilize that good if you were very good online and engaging i think mm. you just naturally you built up and those people those artists who went on to twitter especially first um, mm-hmm. you know you can still see to this day that they really they, they really did well from that you know they've yeah they've, definitely they've built up that that, that following yeah because it was as well as that it was like the scene was going moving more and more away from just talent really and like, it was becoming more about like having a personality do you know what I mean um because like if you think about back in those days the majority like when I was young the majority of the singers on like albums and everyone that that producers was working with they were all from India they didn't really like have much of a presence like a visual presence in it like they were just like the like, people that looks like look like our uncles and stuff in it from 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 India that, that was doing the singing and then slowly after that it became more about all right you know producers coming in videos and producers being more on it online and stuff and yeah, and that was that was a big, big shift in the industry, man. It was it was it was a major shift in the industry. And like if you look at it now, nowadays it's just completely gone on that side now. Like as in you really gotta have something about you if you're gonna be successful in the industry. You gotta have some kind of personality, you gotta have now visually you pretty much gotta look good as well. Do you know what I mean? Which is sad as well, man, because there's a lot of talented people that get, you know, get overlooked because they don't have that personality and it's like sometimes you think like why does someone need to have personality if they're so talented but it's just the way it's gone man and that's not even in our Punjabi industry that's just the music industry and entertainment industry in general you got you got to have uh i mean because the, the the Punjabi industry can be very profitable especially if you're able to kind of do your own videos do your own uh, if you could keep everything in house as much as possible, you you know you're cutting down costs. But some of those artists who who can't do that and are ugly, you know, unfortunately they ain't gonna <laughs> they ain't gonna get the deals what everyone else is gonna get. They will just uh, you know they kind of just left on the buy really. Yeah, 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 and that's what I mean, man. The industry these days is is, is a very different industry, isn't it? Like as in, yeah, when we talk about deals, like who's even given out like who's even going to labels anymore like as in that's that's even like i remember like as it's so crazy that like, me and jazz always have these conversations man, and we had this conversation years ago that labels are gonna be become like not much of a thing anymore video uh, like tv stations aren't really gonna become a thing anymore like it's more and more just going towards 
it's almost like a social media like youtube is just like a social media like and every artist has their own youtube page which you could just treat as an instagram page and the release the song is just like an instagram post you put it out there see how many comments it gets see how many likes it gets see how many streams it gets it's like it's just all everything is digital and it's all about numbers and stuff which is crazy which is mad but it, there's always been something there like that back in the day probably when cds were being sold it was all about sales isn't it and the promotion then the instagram post then was going to shops and putting flyers up on uh, um at their windows and stuff you know what i mean so there's always been something man but now it's just shifted more more towards the digital space which is easier i remember i remember having a conversation with someone about they were talking about producing and how <clears throat> I, I think you, I, don't, I don't think you intentionally meant uh, gone down that road, but you had like you got two, you got two ways of working, and you've got the computer computer producers now, and then you've mm. got like those people who play all the instruments within there, yeah, and yeah. and you know, and then you've got you look at the you look at some of these young producers, and it's just like computer code how they've just you know you look at their screens, it just looks like the matrix of it, and you're like, it's going, mad, it's how mad. how does how does this work in it, and so both kind of sets of uh, religions try to worship in the one house of God of, of music. Mm -hmm. It's just hard because they will naturally clash where you'll have people say, well, you don't know how to play these kind of stuff. And then you've got a coder who's able to just a computer programmer, able to just kind of take a piece and just be able to do it. Yeah, and, the, yeah. and the thing is the audience don't give a shit. They don't care about your yeah. feelings from it. It's just about the sound and what it looks like. Yeah. The final output, which is, and if you think about it, you really kind of need to listen that the direction you need to go is where the audience is kind of going, because they're generally the people that are going to end up listening. But not, not saying that there's anything like, like if you know how to play instruments, that's amazing. That, like, that, that's like one of the best gifts you can have, because these days that really doesn't happen. It's so much less common. And I feel like I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm right in the middle. Mm. I kind of got on the technology side and there was still that little bit like of the the uh, like producer generation that was before me that were they were like all about like playing instruments and stuff so i got that when it came to like learning the harmonium and learning the keyboard and keys and stuff having that knowledge but then equally i know that the kind of beats that you're making these days like you could just do it all on a computer like you can just click the notes in like do you really have to play depends on the song get it because these days Punjabi music wise the majority of the songs don't even have music pieces anymore which is mad like if you think about that like imagine if you said to someone 10 years from now like you're not going to have the typical pattern where in the middle like two times there'll be a mandolin or something or there'll be a thumbi that comes in like that's just not required anymore it's, it's just like a gap a music gap that's just filled up with like vocal chops and stuff which it, I don't know I, I, I don't even know what to say like if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing because at the end of the day, it's music, isn't it? And like, who, no, no one's really got a right to say what sounds good or what sounds bad. Like, if, but if you like a certain sound, then that's fair enough. That that depends on the individual. Do you know what I mean? But in music, there's no right or wrong, man. Like, literally, because if you just become that person, then you'll kind of end up being the person that's left left behind. Mm. I mean, like you, you've worked with a lot of artists, uh, especially kind of established artists when you were first starting out. And then you you progress to kind of like trying to find your own, uh, uh, you know, trying to unearth kind of like uh, lesser known artists. How, how was that experience at that time? And the kind of follow up question was that to say that because your sound was being was different or your approach was different. How did you convince them to trust you in your sound? I'm talking like back like when I done like the Monarchy and stuff, Dorothy Gunny and stuff, and then it was Bakshi Villa. And then my album had like Kaka on there, like Nirma Sidhu. They were all like well known singers in it. And I feel like that definitely helped me just have some kind of uh, like a loud entrance in it. Like, who's this guy that's working with all these big singers and stuff? But then after that, it pretty much went to us just working with like, I want to say like people, like fans really. That's like, for example, the first person was, was Akhil. He just approached us. And then that, and that's a mad thing because we went to India in 2013, I think it was, again, all just to work with big singers. So um, I recorded in, in that 2013 trip, I recorded like Floors Khan, Blair Khan, uh, Rani Randeep, um, other like sick, like proper like sick singers that had a name. And then the industry changed so much within a year that by the year, like 
we went after in 2014, it was just all these new guys that were popping, like just young young guys from Punjab, like Jesse Gill and stuff like that. Um, uh, and like those older singers, people weren't really listening to as much. And it was in that first trip that when I was working with like all these big singers for Oz Khan that we got approached by Akil. And he was just a random guy in the studio, man. And he was just a fan of my music. And we heard his voice and we were like, yeah, this guy's quite sick, man. Like we can do something with him. We recorded some of his vocals, brought them back to the UK, done something with them, released them. And it just ended up doing well. And we were like, you know what? This is quite sick, man, because people catch on to the music. Like rather than who it is, it doesn't really matter like how big the singer is. It's, 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 it, people essentially want to listen to good music. And we were like, you know what? Let's just carry on with that kind of attitude because obviously with okay, it really worked out for us, man. We've done some songs with him. And then Gandhi was the song that just really just, it, it took me from, you know, like being um, like the producer that made like, yeah, like one good album, fair enough, but it just gave me a whole new audience outside of the Punjabi scene, like the Dilly scene, the Bombay scene and stuff like that really just widened my audience to like a different kind of level. And then after that, it was Nirvan. And then it just kind of felt like, you know what, like it was a pattern, like, people don't really care about the name people love newcomers if you think about it there's no there's no hype like newcomer hype like if, if, if you're a singer and, and and you're a newcomer people are automatically going to want to listen to you because they're like oh who is this guy or girl like um you know like something fresh about them and, and like we kind of caught on to that quite early and as well as that it's, it wasn't just about that it was even a case of like it's just easier to work with newcomers like they listen I've made songs with like big artists and they just don't listen and the output sometimes doesn't end up being what I like because they want to do stuff their way and fair enough they deserve it because they're superstars why 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 shouldn't we but I always find that when I work with a newcomer and we just do the music and do the release the way we want to do it it ends up doing well as uh, like compared to when we do it the other way and there's a lot of other people I mean, they say sometimes things don't really go to plan. So you got one of the best scouting systems out there at the moment. So I'll, I'll congratulate you on that because obviously, <laughs> yeah, you, that pattern is working. The other bit is, you know, all those old vocals that you said you were recorded, are you ever going to kind of showcase them at some point or is it just... Yeah, no, nah, definitely, 100%. That's going to be my, I've already, that's going to be my last album, isn't it? My, my retirement album, whenever that day comes. And it's kind of messed up, man. I'm, I'm like being some evil scientist here. I, I want to wait until those vocalists are like kind of like a lot older and like those vocals aren't even going to be possible to get anymore because I got sick vocals bro like Fadoz Khan, Jeevan Man, um, like all those singers that I mentioned like just mad vocals and I thought like the day that I'm going to make like I'll make my like, retirement album it's just going to be all of those old school singers and no one from that current time so that's my uh, that's my that's my plan in it we'll see how it goes do you have a plan then in, in that sense like you know how long you're going to be doing you're going to be doing music and and do it because everything that you've said so far gives the impression to maybe like to myself and people who are listening or watching that mm. you know everything's kind of calculated so is there kind of like a set time where you're thinking right I, i'm done this is the bit where i'm gonna go and just kind of ride off into the sunset almost kind of like tarantino west because uh, tarantino <laughs> is gonna do 10 10 10 films He's done, he's done his ninth one and he's got mm. one more left and then that's it after that normal. Yeah, like obviously I, I know like every artist, there has to be a time in it where you like say like, all right, I've kind of contributed what I can do. And I'd, I'd rather go like when I'm at the, like at the top in it, do you know what I mean? I don't want to go like as in and just carry on rock music, which is there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's absolutely anything wrong with that. If, if someone wants to make music until they're 60, then they should be able to do that. But I feel like the direction I want to eventually go is the more towards like growing other artists and stuff. And like the best example I can give you is someone like Dre really, where he's still very much involved in the music industry, but he's kind of taken a step back and he's more like finding the artists and putting them together with different producers. And like, just like kind of, having that like bird's eye view of everything, like maybe like saying that, all right, get this artist, put him with that producer, make this kind of sound. That's where I eventually go, but I don't think I'm anywhere near that right at the moment. I feel there's definitely so much more for me to do, like in terms of like 
what I want to achieve in, in, in my music. So yeah, that day will definitely come. 100% it's going to come, but I haven't really thought about when it's going to happen. And I don't think it's going to be anytime soon because like I said, there's, there's, there's a lot more that I want to do. But yeah, definitely I, I do think about that. And I think that, you know, everything we're doing with Cloud Creations, someone's going to have to lead it at the end of the day. And it will probably be, be just me and Jazz just doing it at a bit more of a higher level. So you, you, um, just go touching on those vocalists and, and you know, going through that experience and, you know, Dre's with, with some of the biggest people around and, and you have as well. I mean... Um, By the way, when I was doing that Drake, like, obviously, I know Dre is like... Um, yeah, I'm not... I, 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 yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I want to make that clear. Really, yeah, all, like, I'm not, I'm not going to say that you think of yourself Dre, not at all. No, no, it's just, no, no. It's, it's I'm, just I'm saying that, that same principle. Vision, yeah, 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 vision, yeah, yeah, vision. yeah, yeah. And, it, yeah, and you yeah. know, and it's... I think you always got to put it in a way that's palatable, that people kind of understand what mm -hmm. what, what you mean, and you can almost say like that's the vision, which is which is fair, man. Which is which is not a problem. I mean, you work with some of those artists that um, you know bigger bigger artists as well, mm -hmm. um, you know already established. Your, your experiences working with the likes of like Diljit and that. How what was that like in terms of like trying to put your 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 track together? I mean, I mean, how long ago was that come out? Now was it about three four years ago maybe? Yeah, 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 it was, you know. Um, yeah, the experience was mad, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was a crazy experience, man. Like, it's obviously like a milestone, isn't it? Like, it's something that every producer, I would say, as much as I, I talk about working with new artists, every producer should have that feeling working with literally like a superstar, man. It's just a whole different experience. And yeah, the way that came about was, it was Cali Quest, man. I sent him some... Yeah, the, this is actually a bad story. I don't know, you know, I've told this story before, but um, the song Jin the Mahi was made by myself and the original writer, Good Nazar. We made it in, uh, when I went to India once, we were just chilling um, in Chandigarh, made the beat on the spot. He came back the next day with the lyrics, vocaled it. I brought everything back and I made it. And me and Jazz were like, you know what, this is a mad sounding song. It just sounded so different to every, anything I'd made before. And it had like a proper like Bollywood kind of vibe to it, innit? And we thought like, if this song is done in like the right way, it could potentially do good in that kind of industry. And uh, so I made the song, sent it to a good Nazar. He was proper feeling it. And then we sent it to Speed. And uh, Speed were like, um, nah, they're not too sure about it. Um, as in this a little bit like slow and stuff. And they just basically didn't like it. And uh, six, seven, eight months maybe later, I sent the song as well as some other beats to uh, Kali Quest. And he just happened to be with Diljeet. And then Diljeet heard that song. So he heard the song already done, basically, sang by the original writer, God Nazar. And um, uh, he was like, yeah, like, I like this song, man. Um, I want to do something with it. So then Kali Quest hit me back up. He was like, yeah, like, you know, he, like, Diljeet wants to make this song and like, he, he wants to do it on like a proper level and stuff. And I was like, all right, there's a bit of a problem because the guy that wrote it is signed to speed um so they got the rights essentially to the song so then obviously something like that is just like one phone call away from the gt he basically rang speed and like i sometimes i think now like speed must be kicking themselves thinking damn man like we gave up this song and like they had it it was there and like we were putting pressure on them back in the day to drop that song because we knew that it could have been something but obviously just didn't work out that way in it i'm not even saying anything in a bad way like sometimes it just doesn't work out in it and um yeah after that Diljeet came to the UK crazy just seeing like how how he moves and he's a crazy crazy humble guy man and it's just so sick to see that like one of the most successful artists in the industry is such a humble person um and then yeah even like the video experience was crazy like they went all out with the video got like some I've never been on a video set in the UK like that before like I remember me and Jazz called up to the video and they were like bro like people walking past us with like walkie talkies and stuff like crew members, like 50 crew members, and it was like, damn man, like this is what it feels like, and it worked with the Jeep. So um yeah, it was sick. It was a good experience, man, for sure. It was a good experience. So I'm guessing like that with that level of work, every time when you pull up and do the UK video again, you ain't gonna, <laughs> you ain't gonna you know? Nah, nah, nah. It's nothing like that, bro. It's like this guy had like Nando's being delivered to like um I don't, I don't even think he was being delivered he had his own chef or something man they like sorted all his food out and everything it was crazy whereas our video shoots you would just go to tesco in it levels and like uh, your old sandwich three pound meal deal trust me trust me trust me but it's good though i, I, I like i like the ghetto video shoots as well because um 
I feel like, I don't know, just when something is done in a getaway, there's a spark, man. There's like something in that hustle that just, you have more of a chance of it paying off. And that sounds really weird. But like so many of like the songs that I've made that have been made in a getaway or the videos that we've made that have just been done proper, like just rago, just like going out with the camera, getting it done. They sometimes end up being the most successful songs. Um, so yeah, I, I would never complain or anything like that with the low budget stuff because I do think that there's like something out there in the universe that just clicks sometimes when you're doing stuff on like a proper humble level that it just ends up working. It's, it's the feeling of authenticity in it, you know what I mean? That's it, that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you've got quite a lot of kind of, I mean, collabs, it, 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 like your record label. You, mm -hmm. You've got, when you think of some artists, it's always like with Manny Sanders, like Jasmine Sandler's as well has done stuff mm -hmm. with you as well. Yeah. Um, how, how is that experience? Because like she's definitely one of those kind of eccentric uh, artists who, who navigates in her own way. Um, you could tell she kind of owns her own space and, and you know, she op the way she operates as well. Um, how was that experience in terms of like bringing you, you, your kind of spark, her kind of spark? How did that come come together? Yeah, I, I was scared of her the first time I met her, bro. I was like, damn, like, like this girl is like, as in she would just say stuff straight up. But I feel like, I feel like when, when we first started like linking up to do that project, because we, we got together a couple of times in the studio, like went through different vocals and stuff, went through different beats. And I met her at, um, I think it was an award show as well, the first time. I feel like she had like a massive barrier. It was like, uh, she probably didn't really want anything to do with me at, at that point. And then we were just like, you know what? We didn't really, the way me, Jazz, and like my mates were acting around her, we weren't really acting as if we were like, basically we weren't like kissing our ass, innit? Like, like we were just the way, we wanted to be as well in it mm. i feel like she kind of like she liked that that we were just being real with it like if we didn't like something we would say it and if she didn't like something she would say it as well so i think like we like actually had like quite a bond on that level and we got to a point where we became like quite close man she came here for like two weeks she was chilling with us like every single day um she was chilling with my missus she took my missus out um to they watched a movie together and stuff um and yeah like i would definitely say that I got to see a whole different side to the industry where people get to see something online and like really judge what they see online but what I saw and experienced in like in like person it was a different person man like she's actually a proper proper like probably one of the like safest artists I've ever had a chance to work with man proper like down to earth like when, when, when like when she's when she's gained your trust I guess in it like she's like just mad down to earth and like just willing to um put in a hundred percent like when we recorded that vocal for Benjiba the first time I recorded the vocal with her I was like a bit not afraid I was just a bit cautious of like can I like guide her like tell her how to record how I want the vocal to come out so I didn't really say much but as the more I got to know her I was like yeah man like as in I feel, I feel like she'll respect that in it if I say to her like now nah, let's do it like this let's do it like that and when it got to that point it was sick man the chemistry in the studio was really really good and um, yeah, I would say that that was a really, really good experience overall because like she literally came and like she lived like around the corner from me for like two weeks. Like for me, jazz, like my missus and my mates, it just became normal. Like life with Jasmine is just like a normal life. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a really, really good experience, man. And like we will definitely work again because I need to give her a song now. And um, I guess she's just experimenting with different stuff as well at the moment. But for sure, 100 percent, there will be another collaboration with her. No, that's good. I mean, like you could definitely see, like, I mean, even that that video is quality as well. You had harps in there as well. Um, you know, do yeah, it, it was a, it was a good. You can see it was a good, clean project. The way that the, the way it was executed, it was stressful though. I'm not gonna lie, it was a stressful project, man. Like we got we finished the song. Basically, we had the video booked and ready before we even had the song. So we had the beat. The beat was there, but we really struggled finding lyrics for that song. We went to loads of different people, man, like three, four different people. In the end, luckily, we um, approached KB, who just killed it. I think we vocaled that song like three days before the video shoot. Um, so it was mad stressful, but it just all came together naturally in the end, man. And it was a good project, man. We had like fun shooting the video, everything was jokes. 
Yeah, like other projects that you've done, because I've always noticed you do take a bit of time out. You take like a bit of hiatus, and and then you, mm -hmm. then you then you come back. You recently just released two tracks, quite quickly, and I would say uh, of, of timing wise for you, mm -hmm. uh, into you and offensive. I mean, what? How do? You, is there any kind of learning experience that you've got from that? Um, not really. I would say, as in, it's just more about the progression now, isn't it? As in, like you probably like people notice that like in the last two videos I'm not even in the videos and that's like something that it's just the next level of like what I want to do in terms of a music producer in it like I don't really I was never really that person that wanted to be in, in the video and I know you might go back and watch my videos and be like well you look like you want to be there but it seriously just got to a point where like I had that following and people wanted to see me in videos but I've necessarily never really been into music videos. I never really liked being in front of a camera or anything. So I would say this is like the next step for me now where I'm just more pushing talent that I like. And yeah, maybe I am taking a little bit of a back step in terms of like visually being there so much. And I'm just concentrating more on the music, concentrating more on pushing that artist and developing that artist. Do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, like when it comes to releasing songs like so close together, it just relates back to that really that it's not really about me it's more about those singers now like check these singers out like, like look how sick they are at composing at writing and um the music is just yeah the music is just like, like a little uh, an addition to that not meaning that i'm going to fully take a step back i'm still very much going to be active and stuff on social media and everything but i would say it's definitely the next kind of journey in terms of my development as a music producer yeah, I think they, they kind of naturally kind of leading it up to, what, you know, what the future lies and stuff like that. So are we expecting albums and singles or, or what is what is that looking like? What's the next 12 months looking like for you? Probably not an album, to be honest, um, because, like Every, I said... Everyone's I'm, doing albums now, man. Come on. Yeah, I know, I know, man. Like, <laughs> and uh, I've never been the type of person to do something that everyone else is doing, innit? So I'd rather just take a step back because I like an album for me like I was talk I guess I've got that old school mentality where an album for me is an album it's like where you go away for like six months or something seven months and just really work on like a body of work that's like an album should be an experience you know what I mean they should have a certain sound whereas I feel like sometimes like albums that come out just feels like there's just a bunch of songs all put together you know what I mean and this doesn't like have like a the album doesn't really have any soul to it, man. It's just, it's just like look at not a pattern, a, a pattern or a flow in it. Yeah, 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 man. So because I'm not in that mind space, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to like just you never know. I might produce an album for a singer, and it might be like a album for them produced by me. But in terms of my own album, yeah, I haven't really got anything at the moment that I've got um, like scheduled to put out. I'm definitely just focusing more on singers that I'm. Um, that I've discovered that I'm liking and there's definitely going to be some like bigger collaborations here and there as well. Sorted, sorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Manny, this is a, this is called the bandwagon. So this is a, a chance where I kind of ask my guests in terms of saying, is there any issue that they want to raise or is there any bandwagon they want to jump on or jump off? This is their opportunity to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to think about it and uh, let us know. I would say that it's when it comes to like this whole like I don't know man like when you release a song I would say the numbers game is pretty much just it, it's given like crazy levels of like mental health issues to artists and anxiety issues to artists bro like it's it's messed up man There's like Buddy, so you, many know, people. you know offensive that's just come out why yeah. isn't that like 900 million it's not 900 million because I don't even know if the population of our people is 900 million, bro. <laughs> like, like uh, yeah, this, uh, this is what I mean, man. Like, as in, I experience stuff where, like, I'll come across a new a new singer and we'll drop a song and then they, they'll expect their song to do as, like, on par with, like, a Diljit song or, like, a Sindhu song. And, like, sometimes I just feel like saying to them, like, yo, like, you're not Diljit and you're not Sindhu. Like, why don't you just enjoy your growth? And... I would say the perfect people to use as an example are um, AP lot. Um, these lot, man, like the the 
I, if I can, like, and me and Jazz always say this, like, they blew up the best possible way you can blow up. They never followed any of the industry rules in terms of like the way they promote their music. They literally just put music out there that they liked until it clicked with people and until it went just into onto a, like a worldwide global level. And I just feel like if more singers and producers out there had that kind of mentality, we'd have better quality of music and there'd be more people blowing up. But it's just these days, one, every, every single wants their first song or their next song to be a hit. Like, it doesn't matter, like, if a song doesn't hit and if it doesn't do well, like, there's really not that much of a big deal, man. You just got to keep on, keep on staying consistent until people listen. And I feel like we're just way too much, like, into just, like, a song needs to be promoted like this. It needs to have this many, like, reels or, like, TikToks and stuff. And it's just ruining music, man. It's proper, proper, proper ruining music. And I don't understand why it's a thing, because every now and again, someone comes out, like, people like AP, that don't do that and they're the ones that blow up and the people that do like the whole crazy get into the like mad like just promotion thing and get so obsessed with numbers this stuff is just left behind man because they overthink every decision and it's just an unnatural way of making music so i, I kind of yeah. i raised yeah. that i raised that point with like uh bobby friction as well and i think uh, i had a little bit with dips i think when those numbers game happened you could see people were getting rewarded from it so they were getting booked on bigger festivals. They were getting booked on this because they believed the hype, the, in, the those those industry around it didn't re really kind of compromise what was going on. And so they were getting headlines. They were doing this. And then once someone starts that, then it's just uh, keeping up with the Joneses, isn't it? It's like, you've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. And you're just getting to such a level of, uh, of kind of aggression. That it's just <laughs> it just yeah, becomes yeah, yeah. it becomes ridiculous. Like it's the worst kept secret, knowing bot mm -hmm. farms, all of this. And yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. having a real distortion on the whole scene, really. Yeah, and sometimes it's hard to control, man. Because like when you work with pe like people, they can like there's sometimes singers will just go out and do that stuff without even asking you. And I've seen that happen. Like it's happened with myself, it's happened with other like producers, like the singers or something will just and I'm getting fake views and stuff, and it's just like, damn, man, like, you didn't have to do that, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't just have faith in yourself and your own music and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, don't, because these numbers and stuff, there's so many people that do that, and they're just such a short-term way of being successful, because if you just go through the grind of building an actual audience, an actual audience of people that are going to listen to your music, those are going to be fans that are going to be with you, probably forever man because if, if you're a diehard fan of an artist you're most likely going to listen to them for like the majority of your life in it you know what i mean so you're way 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 better off just building fans like that as opposed to just chasing numbers man which is not really going to get you anything in the end ever um but i, I think more and more people are learning man like, like some of the new singers i work with these days they just say that you know, we don't want no fake views nothing like we want to put the music out there we want, actually want to see what kind of response it gets like are people like fucking with the music we're making or should we not make that music and go a different direction and try something else yeah. I, mean. I think like ap and stuff like that you, you could see like there's a we're almost entering into a new phase really you've got drill mm -hmm. music this that and, and the way that they operate is they just completely it's like alien <laughs> you know the, all from that side have you got anything more planned with those boys um I th yeah, I, I had another song with AP. We'll see if that comes out or not. I talked to their manager quite a bit, Harman. They, they're supposed to be coming out to the UK, so we're supposed to be getting in the studio. And let's see, man. I'm I'm not like the kind of person where, like, as in, like, for example, if someone blows up, I don't expect them to own me anything in it. Like, I don't expect them to be like, you have to work with me because we've worked together before in it. Like, I would yeah. never... Um, I'm, I, would, I just feel like that's like a horrible attitude to have, do you know what I mean? Like, we worked together and that was sick. That was a really, really good moment for, for both of us. Um, if it happens again, then it happens, man. Um, I'm not really down to like put pressure on anyone in it for that collaboration to happen. But I'm pretty sure if we got in the studio, something would definitely come out, man, because like, the kind of music that, I know that kind of music that they're into, like we're into as well, like drill music and stuff. So naturally, I think something would happen but it's just got to happen like naturally you know it can't be forced or anything like that and 
let's see, man. They need to get over to the UK first because they've got a big following here, man. So that <laughs> whenever they do their shows here, it's gonna be it's gonna be mad. If they need backing vocals, you know, I'm a very you know, Manny, you know. <laughs> Obviously, bro, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. You'll be first there, man. Manny, I, I know we were tight for time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it bring it to a close at this bit, but um no a big big thank you. Um I know you've given a rare insight in terms of some of your, you know, your bit of your background, your history. Um, and you know, different for me, just a different kind of take in terms of some of your the the standard kind of uh interviews that you get really. So I just wanted yeah, to have yeah, a, yeah. you know, I just wanted to uh, just say thank you and uh, door doors always open for anything that you want to do on, on here. So is there any other last plugs that you want to give money? And and I'm Bob and Gills, I know they're listening, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll say it now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Big up the Gills, man. Big up the Gills. <laughs> I just go up there, man. I haven't been up there in a long time, bro. You know, so there's a there's a gig happening this week, and okay. uh, I've had, I've had what, the message. No, no, nah, nah, down here. Oh, I've, right, I've, down I've had the messages that they're coming. So this is this will be out on Wednesday, and the gig's yeah. happening on the weekend, and I'm scared, man. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like after after all this time, like as in that that now it's the younger generation, they've taken over it. Like wild. Yeah, they're not on it, man. They're not on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. So yeah, so socials catch you on everything. Um yeah, tracks man, out, offensive is out. Um, check into you. I, I love that. That's my personal favorite. I, 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 that's sick, my, sick, that's sick, yeah. So, uh, now, big respect, money, and uh, look after yourself and uh, love to the family and all. You too, bro. You too. Thanks for having me on, man. First podcast, isn't it? That's it, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Safe, man. Safe. Safe.